Hey everybody, we're going to start a new series today. We're going to be restoring this Crossley uh, Model 124 radio. This was in the Crossley Grandfather Clock. It's a Crossley Playtime. Um, I previously put up a video of me working on the clock part of it. This is the radio part, and um, this is exactly how I received it. And you can see it's in, in pretty rough shape. Um, I can tell you the schematic that comes with it is not very good. I haven't been able to find a good one. I'll show you what I have in a moment. But there's some uh, there's some notable things about this about this radio which I'll point out to start with. So one is it's very dirty, obviously. It's got this uh, Arcturus blue tube in here, and I did a little bit of research on this. These were um, fairly popular. Um, you know, they had their trademark was blue glass, obviously. And I think in later years, what they did was they took old um, tubes and they recycled the sockets. So some of these that you may find out there, say like Philco on them or RCA. I haven't pulled this one out yet. But um, it's got this unique blue tube, which is interesting. And um, you can find these on, on eBay and stuff like that, but I haven't even tested these yet. As far as the tube lineup goes, um, still learning a little bit here, but um, we'll, we'll see what we can point out. So. To start with, this is our rectifier tube, I think. No, that's a 47 right there. And we should have an 80 rectifier in here somewhere, which I'll have to find. Um, these tubes almost look original, honestly. But we'll, uh, we'll get to that. But there's one thing that's interesting is the, um, if you look here on the documentation, I'll show you that real quick, the filament voltages. 2.3 to 2.5 volts. So there's no 6.3 volt filaments, obviously. And the rectifier is 4.6 to 5. That's the 80 tube. So that's good. Um, you know, plate voltages are, uh, are are listed, which is really helpful. So that will help me to uh, to test it when I once I get this thing repaired. But you'll see here the schematic is just uh, looks like it's you know all hand drawn, um, not very crisp. Looks like it's all kind of sandwiched together. So um, we'll have to figure that out. And I'll give you a, a picture of the bottom, which isn't very good. And it gives you some alignment instructions. So what I've done to start this off, pull the shot back a little bit. What I've done to start this off is obviously I've exploded the um, schematic. And I've got something a little bit larger here. And it looks like the tube lineup is a 35 in the first stage, 24, a 35, a 27, a pair of 47s, which go to the, uh, these are your output tubes. Then it looks like there's a 27 here, and I haven't studied this yet to know what it does. And this is your 80 rectifier tube. As far as, um, you know, the cosmetic condition of the amp, um, it looks really dirty. But uh, I'm sure it'll clean up well. The uh, tuning capacitor is frozen, so uh, I'm certain I'm going to have to remove that and clean it and oil it and all that stuff. Um, the dial that's here on the front, right here, is warped, so I can get a replacement one of those on radio days. But the first thing we're going to do is just check the transformer, make sure the transformer is good. We also have a cap can up here, I would imagine. And if we flip this thing back, to take a look underneath. ruin those tubes. Let's see what we can do. Let's prop it up this way. Okay. So you'll see underneath there's not a lot of stuff here. Um, there's really not a lot of components. All of the capacitors are in a can. So there is uh, there's one capacitor right here. It's a 1.1 microfarad. And there's one here. I can't read what that says. I'll get to that. Um, these are your coils, which I'm going to need to test. And this black box right here is the electrolytics. And you can see that it's, uh, it's I'm, I'm guaranteed that it's dried up. This is from 1931. So, um, so there's no, no suspicion on that. Um, I, I, I think I pointed this out earlier. There is a broken uh, wire right here that goes to, looks like it goes to the... Uh, speaker output somewhere. So we'll have to figure that out. It looks like it might be a ground. I'm not sure yet. But um, not a lot of work here to uh, to restore. Um, it's really just about testing. 
Looks like there's a little sardine can down here, which I'll have to look at. So uh, the first order of business is going to be to um, to get these tubes documented and start to clean the chassis. Okay. Of course, but we won't do that until we uh, we ohm out the um, the transformer. So I'm going to uh, stop the camera here for a moment. I'm going to document which tubes are which. I'm not sure if they're marked yet, so I want to be really careful about that. I just noticed there's another Arcturus tube right here. <laughs> I didn't even realize that. So there's two, two Arcturus tubes in here. So anyway, um, let me shut the camera. I'll document what I've got here, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I've made my little map here um, and some, some pretty cool tubes in this thing. So... Um, the tube that was here is an 80. It's an 80 rectifier, and it's a Ward's Super Airline tube. We're going to need to test that. The tube that was here was a really large 47. Look how big that is. It's like a Coke bottle amp. Coke bottle tube, I mean. We'll test that. The one next to it is the Arcturus tube. And, um,. If you see here, look at this real closely, it says, uh, I don't know if you can read that, it says Crossley, and it says uh, Arcturus, made in the USA, um, and there's no number on it, so I don't know what kind of tube it is, but I do know that it goes right here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a wild guess that it's a 47, because there are a pair of 47s in this thing, so it's probably um, a similar 47 tube to the one I showed you before, but it's just an Arcturus tube. We'll look at that later. This tube over here, don't know which one it is yet. It's not marked. It does say Cunningham C327 on it, so I'll need to do some uh, research on that and see what it is. If I had to guess, I would say it's probably uh, one of the 27s. That's going to be my guess. Okay? Again, got to do research. The tube that's that goes right here is another blue Arcturus tube that had a, uh, it's got a broken grid cap on top, so this tube's no good. Not sure what this tube is yet either, um, but you can see here, this was just disconnected, so this, this tube's no good. It's a shame. It's a nice tube. But I don't know what kind it is, and this is a uh, this says Crossley 551. And again, if I had to guess what that is, um, I'm going to guess it's probably. Let's see. It's either going to be a 27 or a 35. I'm not sure which one yet. This tube here is a 35, and that goes right here. There's a grid cap there, right there. That's a 35. And this is a 24A. And that goes right under here, underneath this, uh, this piece of metal, right down there. And there's a, another grid connection, grid top to that. And that leaves us to the last tube, which is again nameless. It says Cunningham uh, C327. And that goes right here in the front. So we've got all of our tubes out, and uh, we'll have to test the ones that are good and see if they're good, or we may have to replace them. I have a lot of old tubes, so I'm not worried about that. So I think the um, the next step is going to be to get some of this dust off of this thing. Um, I'm probably just going to bring it outside and blow it out, and uh, and I'll go do that. So I'll be right back. Okay, after a good uh, after a good vacuum and and blow here. Uh, we were able to get 87 years worth of dust and crap off of here. So uh, by doing that, I know now what the tubes are supposed to be. So they're clearly marked right on the tube socket. You can't see it probably, but this is a 27. This is a 47. This is a 47. That's the 80. This is a 35. That's the blue Arcturus tube that's broken. There's another 35 right here. And then underneath this metal thing, there's a 24 and a 27 in the front. So I now know what I've got, which is good. So um, that's a great start. I don't see a lot of rust. There's a little bit. I'll have to put some uh, navel jelly on there and clean that up. But um, our next uh, step here, I want to try to free up this uh, tuning capacitor. That should be probably the next thing I do. 
So uh, I'm going to see what I can do with that. Looks like it's a it's an interesting design for sure. It's got some kind of compressed spring in there. But before I do that, let me before I get ahead of myself, let me test out this transformer. Be right back. So in order to test the transformer, I need to get rid of this this capacitor box here. It's just falling apart. I don't know if it's uh, burnt. I don't know. So uh, I've removed the two screws here that hold this bracket on. I'm simply just going to cut these wires. So there's one wire here that appears to go to the speaker jack. That's gone. And there's one here that goes to ground. That's gone. And there's another one here that goes to... Let's see. Goes to, uh, let's see, which tube is that? Let's see, going backwards. Looks like it's the 80. So we're going we're gonna to snip that off. Let me lift this up a little bit so I can get to it. I think that should do it, let's see. Let's lift that up so you can see. Yeah, so here's the uh, here's the capacitor box. Looks like it's been leaky for sure, and I can see that by looking at this metal bar here, which appears to be rusted, right there. That's okay. But now I have access to the leads uh, from the uh, transformer, so I could start to uh, check that. So let me get this thing positioned and we'll check those uh, we'll check the leads of that transformer. Right back. Okay, we're going to start checking the transformer here. Now there's two wires here that come out together and go to the 80 tube. So I'm going to make the assumption that they are uh, they're a pair. So let's check that first. Good. I'm getting the winding. That's good. It's a good sign. The next, uh, the next pair that comes out of here, let's see where they go. Um, this is the power cord. Let's see if this is a pair right here. That's my B plus right there. That's good. Good news. Next pair, let's see where that goes. Looks like one goes to this uh, lead from the power. Uh, where does this one go? Let's see. No, well, that's not a good assumption. There's another pair that comes out here. Probably gonna have to check the schematic on this, but it looks like um, looks like the windings are good. So it looks like I found my filament winding. I probably need to find that's that's this one right here. That's my five volt, and I have to find another filament winding that goes to the uh, other tubes, which is the two point three, I think it was. And that's probably this pair of wires right here that comes out. I don't know if you can see that. Right here. And it looks like it comes here to this tube over here. And then the filaments wind all the way down. <clears throat> so I'll continue checking this off camera. Um, but at least I know that um, the transformer in theory appears good. When I lift it off that, um, that can, that resistor can. I found this little piece of wire just kind of hanging out of this hole right here. It's not connected to anything. So at some point somebody was in there and the piece of wire got loose. Luckily it didn't short out the transformer. So so that's good news. So, um, so let me go uh, do a little more digging around here and I'll come back when I have some progress. Be back. Okay, I found the other winding. It is back under here. And that's the uh, the 2.5 uh, 
uh, volt filament. So uh, transformer is good. So um, next step is going to be to take a look at that tuning capacitor and see what I could do with that. So let me flip it over and we'll uh, we'll take a look. Well, it's amazing what a little WD-40 on a knob can do. So this is working. This is freed up. That's really really good news. Yeah, I'm going to be really careful on this radio because, you know, it is from 1931 and one thing I've learned in this hobby is that they used all kinds of wacky plating um, methods back then and this is probably cadmium plated and I'm not going to disturb that because that stuff is not good to breathe so we're going to be really careful with this one. I'm not going to be scrubbing this thing, anything like that um, because that would just be a bad idea. It's not good to breathe this stuff. So I'm going to do just a, a mild cleaning on it and see if I can get some kind of uh, shine back on it. We'll see. Um, but I am going to be, be careful about that because you just can't mess with these chassis. So um, I think we're in relatively good shape. Next thing for me to do, which I won't do on camera, is test these tubes and see which ones are good and which ones aren't. Now that I know what they are. And, um, and I'll check my tube stock and see if I have the right tubes, if I have to replace any. And uh, if not, I'll have to order them, but I'm pretty sure I have them all. And um, then we'll start looking underneath and see what needs to be replaced. As far as this um, capacitor can goes, I may, uh, I may put this back in, you know, make a new can, obviously, and stuff it with the right caps and put this back in the radio, make it look authentic. I have to figure out what I could make the box out of, but that's easy to do. I'll figure that out. So uh, I'll take a look at that as well. So... Um, so that's episode one. So I don't think this radio is going to be really hard to restore, honestly. Um, you know, i got to see what's in, in this box here. I don't know. But we'll get to that later. So, um, so that's the plan. So that'll be it for this episode. Next episode, we'll start to do some of the restore work underneath. And uh, we'll start to see if this thing works. Maybe we'll even try a power-up if I can get it to that stage. All right. That's it for today, folks. Thanks. Take care. By the way, the most important thing that I forgot to mention is I also need to test the coils. With bad coils, this radio is not getting anywhere. So I'll do that off camera too, and I'll let you know how that works in the next video. Take care.